Hey, seventh grade. This is your language lesson for Tuesday, April the 14th. Lesson two is due for today. Tuesday, we will grade some, just go over, make sure you're doing it, uh, make sure you understand what's going on. Lesson three is participles that will be due on Wednesday. And I just want to remind you one thing about reading on Wednesday, April the 15th, <clears throat> you have a reading lesson for due, and you also are supposed to take quiz one on that day. So that is not a misprint or a mistake. So have lesson four finished, but then also do quiz one on Wednesday, and I will try to remind you of that Wednesday morning. All right, let's look first of all <clears throat> at lesson three, participles. Page eight in your language books, lesson three, participles. What is a participle? Do you remember what participles are? Now we've talked about participles. So this is not a new uh, concept or idea. What is a participle? A participle is a verbal, for one thing, right? What is a verbal? A verbal is a verb form that acts as another part of speech. And most specifically, a participle is a verbal that acts as an adjective, all right? A word that looks like a verb and can be a verb is a verb, but in this case, acts as an adjective. Saying which one, what kind, who's, how many. Okay, won't say all those, but yes. Uh, they actually answer the question, which one and what kind? So you have the example there on page eight. Miss Mary looked at the whispering girls. The subject of the sentence is Miss Mary. The verb is looked. Whispering, in this case, is an adjective. What kind of girls? Whispering girls. Now, are the girls actually whispering? Yes, they actually are. But that is not the verb of this sentence. Okay, the subject again, Miss Mary, looked is the verb. Whispering is a participle, an adjective, Describing the girls. Remember how participles are diagrammed. I'm not sure that I don't think any of it doesn't talk about diagram participles in this one, but participles are diagrammed on like a prepositional phrase line around the corner, right? One of the confusing things, one of the things that you can miss. So, number two, what is the participle? The sound of the gurgling stream lulled me to sleep. What's the subject of this sentence? Sound. What did the sound do? The sound lulled me to sleep. What is the participle, the verb form that describes that it uses an adjective? What kind of stream is it? It's a gurgling stream, so you would underline gurgling. Remember that a lot of uh, participles usually end in ing, ed, en, or t. Okay? ing, ed, en, or t. That's most of the endings for participles. Number four, the microwave still smells like burnt popcorn, Sarah complained. Microwave is a subject, smells, what kind of popcorn is it? It is burnt, so you would underline burnt. You also have participle phrases. Page nine, participle phrases, freshly picked. The flowers filled the room with their fragrance. Freshly picked would be your participle phrase. The house flattened by the tornado. Flattened by the tornado is your participle phrase. All right. What's the participle phrase number six? Fanned by the wind, the flames advance rapidly toward the settlement. Again, find the subject and the verb. What's the subject? Flames. What's the verb? Advanced. All right. So what's your word that could be a verb, or looks like a verb, and in this case, it's a participle or an adjective. What kind of flames? The flames that were fanned by the wind. So you would underline fanned by the wind and have fanned circled as the participle. Number eight, we girls gathered up the apples lying on the ground. What kind of apples, which apples were they? The ones lying on the ground. So underline lying on the ground, circle line, have an arrow to apples. Follow directions for lesson three. Make sure that's finished for Wednesday, April the 15th. Let's look at a few things on lesson two. 
Lesson two are adverbs. What are adverbs? Adverbs are words that modify verbs, adjectives, and other adverbs. They answer the questions how, when, where, to what extent, and sometimes why. Adverbs in number one. Christy was not at church on Sunday. I wonder if she was sick. There's only one adverb in number one, and it's a word that is always an adverb, and that is not. Not should be underlined with an arrow to was. Number three. I have two adjectives. Two adverbs, and they both modify adjectives. Remember that adverbs that modify adjectives come right before the adjective they modify. So what do we have? The Walnut Computer Desk is exceptionally nice, but it is too expensive for my budget. Desk is nice. Nice is a predicate adjective. How nice is it? Exceptionally. You should have exceptionally underlined with an arrow to nice. It is too expensive. It is expensive. Expensive, again, is a predicate adjective. How expensive is it? Too expensive. Underline too with an arrow to expensive. Adverb or preposition, number five. Don't look down. That is simply an adverb. If you would say, don't look down the river, that would be a preposition. But don't look down. Down must have an object to be a preposition. In this case, it's not, so it is simply an adverb. Number seven. Scott leaned the ladder against the fence, climbed up, and looked over. Here we have two words that are often prepositions, but in this case, they are adverbs. Up. He climbed. Where did he climb? Up. It doesn't say he climbed up the ladder, he just climbed up. And he looked over. It doesn't say over the fence or over the wall, but just over. So both of those, up and over, would just be adverbs in this case. Watch out for those. Number nine, adverb phrases. So you have prepositional phrases that modify verbs, sometimes adjectives, verbs and adjectives mostly, sometimes other adverbs. And they again answer the same questions that adverbs do. Number nine, Greg walked to the front of the room for his perfect attendance award. So what's the verb? Walked, where did he walk? To the front, all right? Should be in parentheses with an arrow to walk. Of the room is modifying what? Of the room is modifying front. So of the room is an adjective phrase. It should not be in parentheses. Of the room should not be in parentheses. If you have that in parentheses, make it one wrong. For his perfect attendance award, why did he walk? For his perfect attendance <coughs> award should be in parentheses with an arrow to walk. Number 11. These dates in AD 150, in 1945, all right? Something like that. Those are prepositional phrases saying when. So you should have in AD 150 in parentheses with an arrow to drew. That's when he drew. Of the world is modifying map, so that's an adjective phrase, should not be in parentheses. Excellent. Number 15, page 6, number 15. Underline the verbs twice, subjects once. Circle direct objects, put parentheses around indirect objects. Indirect objects and direct objects come after what kind of verbs? Action verbs. The direct object receives the action. The indirect object receives the direct object. The indirect object is always, if there's an indirect object, it comes between the action verb and the direct object. Number 15, the subject is Beth. You should have Beth underlined once, sent underlined twice. Lori, Stephanie, Denise, me in parentheses. Lori, Stephanie, Denise, me. If you have Lori, Stephanie, Denise in one set of parentheses, that works, but then you need another one, me. And is not an indirect object, so you cannot have and in the end, indirect objects. And then postcards should be circled. That's a direct object. What was sent? The postcards were sent. Who got the postcards? The indirect objects. There are four of them. Correlative conjunctions, 17, underline the correlative conjunctions. Neither nor, either or, 
both and and not only but also correlated conjunctions in this case you have neither nor underlined 19 underline the adjectives adjectives words that modify nouns or pronouns which one what kind whose how many number 19 coral warm and shallow coral modifying reefs warm shallow modifying water 23, gerund, gerund phrase, gerund is a verbal, a verb form that acts as a noun. It can be anywhere that you use a noun, you can use a verbal. So here you're supposed to underline the gerund form, sorry, verbal, gerund, underline the gerund form, underline the gerund form, underline the gerund, sorry, underline the gerund phrase and say, what its function is. 23, reading good books, underlined, and that is a subject. Spelling, quickly, look at the spelling. Number 30, if you use the simile as solid as. 31, when singing with a group, it is important to enunciate clearly. 32, it is better to use understatement than hyperbole. 33, the Apostle Paul was an eloquent preacher. 34, when she is with her friends and family, she falls into the vernacular, sorry, vernacular. Again, vernacular has to do with how a region speaks, whether it is proper or not the accent, the dialects, the way they use words, the idioms, all those kind of things is your vernacular. 35, Howard's arguments progressed in, in a clear, lucid manner. Lucid makes sense. Clear, yeah, makes sense. Uh, sensible. 36, Lawyer's documents are noted for their verbiage. Lots of words, wordy. 37, if at first glance a paradox seems to contradict itself. 38, a word's etymology, the history of the word etymology can be fascinating. 39, a cliche is a trite expression. 40, to talk about a free gift is redundant, since gifts are, understandably, free. 41, contractions always use an apostrophe. 42, it may be a trite cliche. 43, a literary device often used by poets and writers is apt alliteration's artful aid. Apt alliteration's artful aid, and there you have alliteration. 44, often a word's definition. 45, this Hume guy used metaphor. Prose is a museum. 46, Mr. Mrs. Jacobs assigned her English class a composition. <clears throat> 47, best and worst are opposite superlatives. 48, yes sir, you hit the nose on the head. Hit the nail on the head. He was getting two common idioms confused. 49, using a thesaurus can help you. Make sure you have lesson three participles. Lesson three finished for Wednesday, April the 15th. Thank you very much.